Hi guys! Welcome back to our series of lectures about statics of rigid bodies. In today's video presentation, we will have an example of the computation of the cross product of two vectors. We will also show how the direction of the cross product can be solved and show how it is directed in terms of the angle that this direction makes with respect to an axis that are parallel to the x, y, and z axis. Kaya yeah, guys, minsan pa isamahan nyo ako sa ating maging discussion so that we shall be able to follow how the cross product can be used in dealing with problems. Here is the problem guys. A force F having a magnitude of 450 kN is directed from A at 4, 2, and 3 towards B at 2, 16, and negative 2. It is intersected by another force P having a magnitude of 420 kN and directed from A towards C at negative 2, 5, and 5. Compute the magnitude and direction expressed in terms of the angle that the axis make with the positive x, y, and z axis or an axis parallel to x, y, and z axis of the cross product P cross F. So in order for us to be able to solve the problem, maybe it will help us if we can show an illustration of how the forces are directed. And so let us imagine that we have here our three mutually perpendicular axes where this is the direction of the positive x-axis, this is the direction of the positive y-axis, and this is the direction of the positive z-axis. This point A, which is at 4, 2, 3, can be located on a space okay, such that it runs 4. It runs 4 towards the positive x-axis, you will see here. Runs 2 positive, towards the positive y-axis, and 3 towards the positive z-axis so that at the end of that you have the point A whose coordinate is at 4, 2, and 3. While this, while this uh, A point B which is at 2, 16, and negative 2 can be located by moving 2 towards the positive x-axis, 16 towards the positive y-axis, and negative 2 away from us. Okay? towards the negative z-axis okay, such that the end of that will indicate our position of point B and whose coordinate is at 2, 16 and negative 2. So that from A towards B, there is a force P, F, having a magnitude of 450 kN. Similarly, this third point, point C, which is at negative 2, 5, 5, can be located by moving negative 2, moving 2 towards the negative x-axis at this direction, 5 towards the positive y-axis, and 5 towards the positive z-axis. So that at this point, that point shall be our C, whose coordinate is at negative 2, 5, and 5. So that from A towards Z, there runs another force P, having a magnitude of 420 kN. And when we say F cross P, then we are actually talking the cross product of these two vectors. Okay, if, you will be, if you will be looking at that uh, okay, cross product, it actually locates or establishes the plane containing the force F and the force P. So that perpendicular to this runs an axis which shall indicate the direction of Okay, the cross product F sub P and that axis is perpendicular to the plane containing F and P. The question about okay, the direction that is expressed in terms of the angle that this axis makes with the positive X, Y, and Z axis shall be shown in this manner. If we will be moving the X, Y, and Z axis towards the, the initial point of the intersection, then this angle Okay, the angle that the direction of the cross product F cross P shall be the angle that theta sub X which is actually equal to the angle that this makes with respect to an axis that is perpendicular 
to the x-axis. Whereas this angle represented herein as theta sub y shall be the angle that the same direction is making with an axis parallel to the y-axis, this axis parallel, as well as this axis, which is theta sub z, is the angle that the direction of the cross product f cross p is making with respect to an axis per parallel to the z axis. And so if you will be okay, working on that, imagine that we shall be working on this problem, what shall we do? We try to okay, establish first or express first the force f and q in vectorial notation so that we understand that f is equal to the magnitude of f okay, multiplied by the direction of f where f sub m is given at 450 kN and the direction of f is equal to okay, the direction of the point where f is directed which is the point A and B so that it will be equal to xi plus yj plus zk of the distance AB of this distance A and B and if this will be substituted with the value so we shall be having 450 representing the magnitude of the okay, given force. And x of x sub i will be the difference between okay, this point and the coordinate x coordinate of point B minus the x coordinate of point A that is equal to 2 minus 4. Whereas this term for J will be the y coordinate of B that is 16 minus 2. That is equal to uh, for j and for z it is equal to 2 negative 2 minus 3 all over the distance between a and b which is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared so that when this will be substituted or simplified we shall have okay the expression okay we shall have a okay, f equal to 450 times the quantity negative 2i plus 14j minus 5k all over the square root of negative 2 squared plus 14 squared plus negative 5 squared so that when this denominator is simplified that gives us a k15 and then simplifying further this 450 and 15 will cancel each other that gives us a simplified expression of f as a vector as 30 times the quantity minus 2i plus 14j minus 5k Similarly, if we will be doing the same for P, then P will be equal to the magnitude of P times the direction of P, where P sub M is also given at 420 kN. And N of P can also be expressed in terms of the direction where, between the points where P is directed, and that is the direction of A and C. Here is A, and that is C. And so N sub P shall be equal to Xi, plus yj plus zk representing the ordinate of c minus the coordinate of a that gives us therefore negative 2 minus 4 okay, plus 5 minus 3 plus 5 sorry 5 minus 2 plus 5 minus 3 okay and that's, that gives you this k okay, item divided by the square root of negative 2 minus 4 square plus 5 minus 2 square plus 5 minus 3 square and the denominator when simplified gives us a value equal to 7 so that 420 divided by 7 will be equal to 60 okay times the quantity negative 6i plus 3j plus 4k and so we have already now expressed f and p in terms of vectorial notation after we have computed for that or expressed that in terms of vectorial notation, we are now ready to solve for okay, the cross product of F and P. Ano ba itong cross product okay, of F and P? We know that it is equal to okay, the cross product of okay, that quantity, the expression of F and the expression of P. You will notice that F has a coefficient of 30. A constant of 30 while p has a constant of 60 here so we can associate them just like when we say when we discuss the associative property of cross product so we can associate them so that okay we can have 30 times 60 and if we are going to use a okay, the determinants 
the third order determinant. How are we going to write the third order determinant? According to the third order determinant, the first term of the cross product shall be the first row of the determinant. While the second term of the cross product will be the second row of the determinant. And I, J, and K, I, J, and K becomes the third row of the determinant. And so this will be can be simplified by simplifying so that we can associate the product of this one multiplied by the quantity the determinant the second or the determinant of the j for j i have 14 and 5 as well as 3 and negative 2 how we take this one we simply cancel this one and take this part as our j, our i sorry for i that's for i for j we simply okay cancel this one and we copy 5 and 2 first, then followed by 2 and negative 6. So that is 5 and 2, and then you have negative 6, uh, okay, 6 and negative 2. That is 5 and 2 is there, and negative 6, negative 2, negative 6 is here. And so for k, what we do is to just take this one and copy this part. So I have negative 2 and 14, and then negative 6 and 3. That's for k. Then when we simplify the determinants, how do we simplify it? We take the product of the two that is equal to 1,800. And according to our computation, arrows that is directed downward shall be positive. Hence, okay, if we will multiply this one, this must be positive. So you have positive 28. And if we are going to multiply this one, what do we have? We shall have negative of the negative 15. And that is for i. While this one, okay, we have here positive of 5 negative 5 times negative 6 is a 30 while this one will be negative and that is equal to negative of negative 4 for uh, k is k so i have negative 6 k minus negative 84 now we will be simplifying the cross product f and q shall be equal to 1800 this can be simplified to be equal to how much is this this is equal to a 43i Whereas this one will be how much? That is negative, no, okay, sorry, positive 34J and this will be equal to negative 78K. So this becomes now our computation of the cross product between F and P, which is expressed in terms of vector notation. How are we going to compute for the magnitude of the cross product F and P? We're going to compute for that. So, the magnitude of the cross product between F and P shall be equal to okay, 1,800 times the square root of okay, the x component of the vector, that is 43i, plus the y component square of the vector, plus the z component square of the vector, that gives us okay, 1,800 times the square root of 9089 which when simplified gives us a value of 117,000 I'm sorry 171,605.2 okay we're going to solve for the direction okay there are actually two ways of uh, case computing for the direction one is we can have it using the unit vector or we can compute for the direction in terms of the angle that this axis will be making with with respect to the x, y, or the z axis, or with an axis that are parallel to the x, to the y, and to the z axis. Now let us take, for example, okay, the computation of the direction as a unit vector. And we know that okay, the direction of the uh, cross product shall be the ratio of the vector divided by the magnitude, that is the ratio of c over c sub m. Where C is already known or computed to be the same as this one. And the magnitude is computed to be okay, this one. So when we substitute all of these ones, I will have 1,800 times the quantity 43 times I plus 34 times J plus 78 times K divided by the quantity 1,800 times the square root of 43 square plus 34 square plus 78 square. And you will notice that both 1,800 will cancel each other. And so we can have our direction expressed as a unit vector equal to 43i 
plus 34j plus 78k divided by the square root of 9089. However, we can also compute for a the direction of the cross product in terms of the angle that this is will be making with respect to the x to the y and to the z axis, just like I have presented a while ago. So if you will be substituting that value in the formula, a theta sub x will be equal to r cosine of the x component of the vector divided by the magnitude of the vector, where the x component of the vector shall be the product of 1800 multiplied by 43, this one. Okay, so that if that will be substituted, then that becomes r cosine of 1800 multiplied by 43 divided by the magnitude representing this 1800 over the square root of 9089 where in that k okay, okay, formula 1800 will also cancel and that we can have okay, the angle okay, the sub x becomes equal to r cosine of 43 over the square root of 9089 which when simplified gives us an angle of 63.19 degrees meaning that angle this angle 63 will be the angle that this will be making with an axis parallel to this okay similarly we can compute for t sub y meaning that is the angle that the same direction will be making with respect to an axis parallel to the y axis and this can be computed as the ratio, r cosine of the ratio between the y component of the vector divided by the magnitude of the vector or the cross product. Where the y component is the product of 1834. Okay, because when we multiply this and that, that gives us the total y component of the cross product. And so that becomes equal to r cosine of 1800 multiplied by 34. A divided by 1800 times the square root of 9089 and again these two values will cancel so we shall have a the arc theta sub y as the arc cosine of 34 divided by the square root of 9089 and that gives us an angle of 69.11 meaning this angle the angle that this black one direction will be making with respect to an axis parallel to y will be equal to 69.11 11. And finally, we can solve for theta sub z as r cosine of the z component. I'm sorry, this must be z. This must be z. The z component of uh, k, the cross product divided by the magnitude of the cross product, and that gives us 1800 multiplied by 78. This one is 78. K divided by 1800 k times the square root of k 9089, and that gives us a value of 70. I'm sorry, 35.1, meaning the angle that that makes with respect to this axis parallel will be making, will be equal to 35.1. And so, okay, that's our uh, computation for uh, a sample, uh, okay, for the cross product. And I hope, guys, that you are able to follow the okay, presentation of the sample. If you have, uh, again, questions about the topic, you may write on the comment. Or if you have not subscribed yet to this channel, I am inviting you once again to subscribe to my channel so that my next uploads, in my next uploads, you will be notified of uh, the new uh, video presentation. Again, thank you for watching.